Hey guys, welcome to Small Mouth Crush. My name is Travis Manson and today I wanted to do a video on my spinning rod setup. So I want to go through the rods as well as the reels, the line, different applications and get you up to speed on exactly how I have my spinning rod set up. Now I got a lot of questions as far as what type of, of rods and reels that I use and so we're going to go through that each one individually. Uh, I have them all lined up behind me right now. I believe I'm up to what we got one two three four five six seven eight nine. So I'm currently running ten different spinning rods and each one has a specific application. So let's get into it. Okay, so I am not sponsored by any rod or reel manufacturer whatsoever. The rods and reels that I use, I use because I found that they fit my style of fishing and I really like the setup that I currently have. So most of my spinning rods are St. Croix Extremes and I did actually add another rod to the family. I did add a Dobbins rod to the mix and I'll explain why I did that uh, coming up. Okay, so I own four of the St. Croix Legend Extreme seven foot medium power rods and I actually pair all my spinning rods with a uh, Shimano Stratic CI4 Plus and every one is the 3000 series and I do that, well for one I found that this particular reel is the best in its class as far as the price range, the durability, the smoothness of, of the reel itself, the drag system, everything is perfect. The balance is perfect with these rods. So I go with that. Now on the mediums, I typically have all braid on these mediums and the braid is Power Pro. I use 10 pound test Power Pro for the main line on these medium setups. Now this one here actually doesn't have a reel. Uh, I did have to send one back to Shimano um, because I abused it a little too much and so I'm waiting to, to get that one back. Now unfortunately what I have found out is they don't make this style of Stratic anymore okay with the uh, with the foam handle and so I actually ended up getting a new one that I'll share with you. So this is the new series, the new uh, updated model of the CI4 Plus. This is the 3000 series as well. And so I am assuming when they send me that new reel that it's also going to be this model, which puts me in a bind a little bit because I like having the same feel. I like all of my spinning reels to feel the same. So with this updated one, the handle's a little different and this, the frame of the, the reel itself is also a little different and one thing they forgot to include and I, I'm not quite sure why but there's no anti-reverse on this reel whatsoever and so that's kind of throwing me for a loop a little bit because I do rely a lot on back reeling when I'm fighting uh, you know big smallmouth that comes into play quite a bit for me I mean there's ways around it you can you can use your, uh, I mean, you can set your drag and, and pull line out if need be. And maybe that's just an old school way of fishing and they're trying to get away from that style. I like it. I prefer it. But if I want to be able to adapt to these new reels, unless they decide to bring the anti-reverse back, I'm going to have to uh, figure out a different way when I'm fighting sometimes uh, these fish. Okay, so why do I own four of these in the 7 medium? Well, Typically, and let's talk smallmouth for instance, typically what I'll do is I'll have two or three rods rigged up with a tube. And the, so the seven foot mediums I throw a tube on and it could be anywhere from an eighth all the way up to a half 
or sometimes even uh, heavier if I have to. So I like to have at least two of them rigged up with tubes, maybe different colors, different sizes. And then I also prefer to drop shot on the seven foot medium only when I'm making cast, long cast with the drop shot. So if I'm in if I'm on a school of fish that I'm not vertically fishing a drop shot where I actually have to make longer casts, I feel that the seven foot medium has the perfect tip for getting a better hook set on those fish. And I'm going to do a few more videos in the future on actually how I do drop shot because that's a whole nother video. So I just want to kind of keep it going with the setup on the rods and reels. And so if I'm in a tournament situation, I will actually use, I'll have, if I think I'm going to be drop shotting more and casting, then I'll have two or three rigged up with drop shots. And that could range in length, uh, could range in weights, baits. I just like to have everything right there so I'm not wasting time retying. That's why I like to have a multiple rod setup like this. And so it, it really just saves time and allows me to get at those fish faster. So if I'm fishing on, let's say, the Chesapeake Bay, where I also use a spinning rod a lot for largemouth, it's great to have different setups as well. So I can throw, you know, a power worm on one with a light weight. I can throw a French fry. Uh, I'll be able to um, have a tube tied on as well if I need to. And then I also throw uh, a lot of Cinco's, like the four inch, things like that, on these seven foot mediums. So they come into play quite a bit for both smallmouth and largemouth fishing for me. So I just recently uh, bought this Dobbins Champion Extreme. This is the uh, DX743 model. And I got this specifically for drop shotting for largemouth. And I'll probably try it out as well for smallies, but uh, typically I would still have braid on here. I just threw some uh, just threw some line on here so I could test it out. I haven't used this yet. I actually just got it a couple weeks back. But the main purpose of this rod versus the Legend Extreme is the guides. So the Legend Extreme has very small guides as you get to the tip of the rod. And I find what happens a lot, especially since I use braid quite often, that when I connect the braid to the floral leader, sometimes that knot on short pitches, underhand pitches, will get caught on these guides. And so on the Chesapeake, I do a lot of tight cover drop shot fishing. And so I went with the Dobbins just because the, the guides are a little bit larger. And so I'm doing an underhand pitch with a drop shot around docks. It's going to allow me to have a smoother cast and not get hung up. I don't have a problem tying floor of the braid when I'm fishing open water with this setup because typically the cast is uh, a little bit more, uh, I, I guess it's a more faster with the wrist and so it shoots out the the bait a lot quicker and it doesn't have that that hang up. So for now I'm pretty content with this setup and we're gonna give it a run this year and see what happens. Okay so I also have three of the Legend St. Croix Extremes in a seven foot medium light power. So these rods specifically, uh, one rod will be set up, uh, I use it for uh, when fishing a hair jig, a uh, real you know, 16th ounce or an eighth ounce hair jig. I'll use that quite a bit. They're still paired with braid. Uh, typically I'll go down to a five pound Power Pro, something a little bit smaller, and then of course uh, the floral leader as well. So I'll use this setup for my hair jigs. And then I also have the other two. This one actually um, has a scrounger on it right now, but typically these other two rods, I will, I will basically have them set up with a drop shot when I'm vertically fishing. So if I'm fishing straight below the boat and I'm looking at my graph and I'm in deeper water, that's typically the rods that I will pick up to use for drop shotting straight down. I feel it, 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 it 
it bends, it has a nice uh, hook set. I've never had any issues with, um, with the line coming out of those guides either, especially when I'm just dropping straight down. So it works out great for me. So sometimes with all these spinning rods in the boat, it can be hard to know which one's which. And so what I do is I put, it's basically just a rubber piece here. I got a whole big bag of them. I got these from a friend of mine, Kurt from Dirty Jigs Tackle. Uh, he sent me a bunch of these years ago. And I basically take this and I will put it on the butt of the rod. So my medium lights have one and then my mediums have two. And this also allows me to, you know, put the sinker on the drop shot and hold it in place. It works out great. I know which rod is the medium, which one's the medium light when it's sitting in a rod locker. And so these are really cool. I don't know where you'd find more of these. Uh, in, in fact, what I'll do is for anyone that shares this video on Facebook, uh, I'm going to pick a couple random winners and I'll mail out a bunch of these for you guys to try out. Okay, the next rod in the lineup is another St. Croix Legend Extreme. This one is the 7.6 Medium Light Extra Fast. And this one, I normally always use mono on it. So typically, 8 pound test mono. And this rod's pretty versatile. Uh, I do have another spool that I will put uh, some lighter fluorocarbon on it as well. And so this rod is actually a pretty multi-purpose rod. Right now I have a uh, shad wrap on it. So it works great for casting smaller crankbaits. But typically, especially in the summer, this rod gets the most use when I'm dragging a tube. And so that's when you're basically going with the, the current or the wind and your tube is so far back. I like to use mono in that case because I feel it gives that tube uh, it doesn't get hung up as much in the bottom and it kind of just helps bounce around and float around and I'm using a light weight tube on that application and then the, the light tip with the long rod actually allows those fish to really load up on it and I mean there's times your your tube is back there I mean 50, 60, 70 yards and so it's really important to use that type of setup. I also throw my spy baits on this rod. I feel that the longer 7.6 really allows me to cast those baits out further. And so really, it's used for crankbaits, small crankbaits, spy baiting, and then typically just dragging a tube is where this rod will come into play. Okay, and now the last spinning rod in the lineup is another St. Croix Legend Extreme. This one is the 5.9 Medium Extra Fast. And so this one is used really in just a few certain situations. Uh, typically what I'll do is I'll have this one tied up when I'm fishing close cover. Uh, not, I mean, especially around docks and boat houses and things like that. And I'll typically use a jig on here or I'll skip a, a Cinco or some type of bait like that. And that's typically when you have to literally get on your stomach and make cast into precise areas. The short rod really allows me to, to take advantage of that and uh, it doesn't get a whole lot of use. Uh, typically if you're fishing docks I can, I can get away with you know my bait casters or my spinning rods but this is strictly when you gotta like you gotta kneel down, you gotta get in some tight places and you have a real short uh, you know window to be able to you know get that bait under or around that piece of cover. So doesn't see a lot of use but I certainly do bring it out. It's always available when I'm fishing, you know, tight to cover and ready to go. And I typically will do 15. Uh, I've gone up to 20 as well, fluorocarbon on this. Uh, I have put braid on it as well, so it's just depending on the situation, that's the kind of line I'll go with. So, obviously with all these spinning rods, it's important to, for one, I mean, these are a pretty expensive setup. I want to take care of my equipment. So I am typically pretty good at using a rod sock, especially when I'm storing them in the boat, in the rod locker. I'll put the rod sock on there, and then I'll also use a real glove. 
for the spinning reels itself. And then it's a very compact, uh, I can lay these on top of each other. I don't have to worry about getting them all tangled up and they're, they're ready to go. The key is to put them back at the end of the day. And it also helps with boat rash and things like that. Before I started using those, uh, I mean, my reels would get so beat up. And a lot of times it's not just necessarily the ones on the deck, but it's ones that are in the rod locker. So in my boat, I actually took the, the tubes out of the port rod locker simply because I, I'm, a, I'm able to put more rods in there. And so I use the rod socks with these gloves. I'll be able to, you know, put all my rods in there. And when I pull them out, it's tangle free. It's an effortless system. The only thing is you just got to remember to put these back on. I've been pretty good. It's also great for traveling when you're putting these in a vehicle, when you're jumping in someone else's boat in the morning and uh, you know, you're, you're going to grab a handful of rods. I mean, they fit perfectly and you're not going to get them all tangled up or banged up. So I certainly would advise to invest in some rod socks as well as the, uh, the real glove. And they also make those uh, for bait casters as well, which I use. Okay, obviously this setup is pretty extreme, but I find it does come in handy being able to have all these types of different spinning rods, uh, especially on lakes where I may encounter largemouth and smallmouth living in the same area. Sometimes it's nice not to have to retie and make sure you have the right line and you know the, the action of the rod and all that comes into play. Having the right equipment just kind of takes the guesswork out of it uh, throughout the day of fishing. So I would appreciate it if you would like my channel. Also, leave any comments that you may have. And if you do uh, share this on Facebook, I'm going to mail out a few of these uh, sinker, grabber, stopper dealies and uh, give them a try. So we'll see you guys on the water.